Sonia, your health promotion coordinator, and we're back today making pouch salmon with asparagus and potatoes. So for those of you that want to make a healthy but easy meal and like the one pan idea, this is a great option for you because you cook everything in one pouch, which is your parchment paper. So before I go ahead and begin cooking, I'm going to take you through the ingredients and what we're going to use. All right, so I'll show you what we're going to use. We have our cookie sheet that we're going to use. It's what we're going to cook this in, but we're actually going to wrap it in parchment paper and that's what's going to create the pouch. If you tuned into my non-pizza recipe, you saw that I'd actually trimmed the parchment paper to fit the cookie sheet, but because we're going to wrap the parchment paper to form a pouch, we can leave it as is. We're also going to use salmon, so I'm using wild caught Alaskan sockeye salmon. And for those of you that know me, you know that I like to make food that can serve for both dinner and lunch the following day. So this, there's two portions in here that we're going to use. I'm also using the Little Potato Company's Blushing Bell potatoes. Um, you can use red potatoes if you want. You can actually use whatever type of potato you'd like, but these potatoes cook very easily. Um, so I like to just throw them in here and they're small enough that uh, you don't end up with part of the potato being raw by the time you're done. And then I'm also using fresh asparagus. This was actually really cheap. It was $1.25 for a whole bunch. Um, and so this serves about two to three people. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash right, my So hands. we're at my sink. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. So you might only see my torso in this, but whenever you cook, you wanna make sure that you do wash your hands. Even if you're not cooking the food, if you're just eating it, you wanna make sure that whenever you're handling Food, you should wash your hands whether or not you're in the middle of a pandemic or not it's just good practice to get into so that way you know that you don't have extra germs or bacteria in your hands so you'll get to see my hands I'm washing you want to turn on your sink you want to make sure that the water is warm um, you don't want it too hot we don't want to burn our hands off we just want to make sure that we use warm soapy water so I always like to get some water in my hands and then you take some soap and you're gonna really, you wanna make sure that you wash your hands for 20 seconds. So I'm using the timer on my phone to wash them. In my other videos, I mentioned that if you don't know what 20 seconds is or you think you might count too fast, you can go ahead and sing the ABCs or happy birthday song. Um, and just make sure, I really like to emphasize washing around the wrists and then even getting under your fingernails. Um, and so once you've done that, I'm looking at the timer on my video here and I am just about ready to rinse off. Okay, you can go ahead and rinse off. I tend to set my water just a little too hot, so got to turn it down a little bit. And since today we're actually cooking with fish, um, you want to make sure that you wash your hands both after you touch the fish um, before touching like your vegetables just to prevent cross-contamination and if you use cutting boards that you're using two separate cutting boards. Okay, so now that the soap is off, I'm going to go ahead and grab my towel and just dry your hands. All right, now we're good to go. I'll see you when I show you the food. Everything that we're using today to cook is fresh. The fish we bought from the supermarket, the asparagus, it isn't frozen, it's fresh produce. And the same goes for the potatoes. So that being said, you do wanna make sure that you wash everything beforehand, just to make sure you get rid of any dirt, especially potatoes, those are a root vegetable. Um, and so they do come with a lot of dirt. The baby bells are nice in that they say that they are pre-washed and ready to eat. I went ahead though and actually washed them, just kind of gave them a rinse off on my own. So that way if there was any leftover dirt, that got I got rid of that. And then the same with asparagus. If for no other reason, it's good practice just because when you are in the grocery store, you're touching produce, other people are touching produce. So it gets rid of any extra germs and um, dirt. I went ahead and I rinsed everything in a colander so that way it would hold on to the vegetables for me and I could just run the water over it and kind of rinse it off and wash it off with my hands. And so when I finished, I put them in a large bowl so that way it would be easier for me to transport to my counter. And then I will begin by chopping off the ends of the asparagus on the cutting board. And so I'll go ahead and show you that process. So asparagus is a really great versatile vegetable. You can put it in just about anything. You can put it in stir fries, in frittatas. So that's with like eggs and a scrambled egg bake, or you can, 
just kind of added to this pouch with salmon. One thing about asparagus is that they're actually, a good asparagus tends to be pretty tender, um, but you do wanna chop off the ends. And so I had a friend that had gone to culinary school and she had learned that if you actually go to snap the asparagus, it tends to snap off at the right area. And that's about where you should cut it off because that's where it actually begins to be tender. The rest of it will be kind of hard. So for those of you that don't wanna just sit there and kind of snap your asparagus, you can also go ahead and just chop off um, the bottom about like an inch to a half inch off of your asparagus. You can also kind of tell with the knife which part of the asparagus is good to be chopped off. Um, if it's not cutting through, then you know that you need to kind of move up the asparagus. Um, one thing that I do want to tell you about asparagus, and not everyone has this happen to them, but some people do. For some people, once they eat asparagus, their urine will end up smelling funny after they go to the bathroom. Um, that is completely normal. Please do not panic. It happens. Not everyone will have that. It's part of your genetic makeup. So there's a gene, and for some people that, that happens. For others, they eat it and you wouldn't know that they ate it. But I have worked with people in the past who thought they got really sick um, when in reality it was just the fact that they had eaten asparagus. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just chopping the ends off of the asparagus. So you're left with the flower part up top here. Um, and so I told you that I have two servings of fish and this asparagus will be perfect for two servings as well. Um, one thing about asparagus, I bought the green asparagus just because that's what they had in the grocery store, but feel free to buy. They come in different colors like purple or white. Um, they just have different vitamins to them, but they, they taste great and you can use them. They're pretty versatile too. So feel free to use whatever color you find in your stores or if you grow them in your own garden, that's great too. Um, Homegrown vegetables always taste awesome. So I personally, once summer hits and the weather gets nice, I like going to the farmer's market because I don't have my own personal garden, but um, I do like eating garden fresh fruits and vegetables. Asparagus are fairly low calorie, um, and so they're extremely nutrient dense. They have been, research has been done to show that they can help reduce inflammation. Um, and just the fact that they're so inexpensive makes them a fan favorite for both families and college students alike. Um, no one wants to be spending an arm and a leg on groceries. Um, and if you have this handy, go ahead and use it. Okay, so I've finished chopping all my asparagus and I'm gonna go ahead and place them back in my bowl that I had them in after I washed them. This will make it easier when I go to make the seasoning, the olive oil um, vinaigrette that I'm just gonna kind of put it in and mix it in before we wrap it in the pouch with the salmon. So I have my potatoes. These are the blushing bell potatoes. They kind of look like mini um, red potatoes. According to the package, blushing bells actually originated in Germany. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these in half for this one that's a little bigger. Um, like I'll show you two different ones. So we have a smaller one and then we have the bigger one. The smaller ones just cut in half, whether you wanna do it um, vertically or horizontally, that's up to you. This one I might cut into fourths just so that way it cooks a little better. And again, I have enough potatoes here for two servings. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will cut it and I'll show you what so that we have our potato and we have our knife. If you remember from my previous classes, what I told you when you cut a knife, you don't wanna grip like claw the food. You wanna hold it so that in essence, you make a flat surface. That way, if anything were to happen, the knife would just slide down rather than give the opportunity to like chop something off. So I'm just gonna hold my potato and these are small and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through. And I haven't gone ahead and pre-cooked these or anything. So this is what it looks like on the inside and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest that way as well. Before I finish cutting my potatoes, I do wanna preheat my oven. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 350 degrees and you're gonna wanna cook your fish in there for about 30 to 35 minutes, depending on how well done it is and how your oven cooks. For some people, their oven does cook a little quicker or if they have the temperature set higher, they'll only need to keep it in there for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat. So we're gonna go ahead and hit bake. 
and it's at 350 so i'll hit start and while it's preheating i'll get to finish cooking all right, so potatoes in today's society have a bit of a bad rap just with the keto diet going around. A lot of people feel that carbohydrates are bad for you and potatoes are rich in carbo carbohydrates. They have about 20 grams of carbohydrates per serving. Um, you do actually need carbohydrates to help you get through the day though. They provide you with the energy that you need. If you didn't eat them, you'd be kind of sluggish. Who likes to work out or is an athlete carbohydrates give you the energy that you need to get through that workout. So whether it's you doing a home workout during this time or after we get through COVID-19, if it's you actually hitting the gym, you need carbohydrates to help you get through your workout. So don't try to eliminate it from your diet just because of a fad diet that's going around. Um, they are relatively inexpensive too. So just like asparagus, it doesn't cost much to buy potatoes. This bag of potatoes cost me about $2. So that's about a dollar per serving. And it was a little bit more because I did buy it in the bag. Um, and so it's the, the company. If you're able to buy loose potatoes, that's great. I just honestly couldn't find them. And this is what I had in my fridge. So this is what I'm using. This meal in general is actually very, it's a very lean but nutrient dense dish. And so it's pretty low in fat, but it's rich in um, protein due to the salmon. And then it has the carbohydrates that you need to give you your energy source for the day. Um, and it's also, if you are observing Lent and you are observing Fish Friday, it's a great Fish Friday option because we aren't using any meat. If you also, if you're a pescatarian, it's an awesome option that way and a great way for you to sneak in a little bit um, of protein into your diet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the potatoes. The one thing I wanna emphasize is the potatoes are high in fiber, which help with um, gut health and digestion, especially if you eat them with the skin on. If you do choose to eat them with the skin on, you wanna make sure that you actually really wash them as I did and like the package had already said they were pre-washed. Um, just because if you don't, then you are bound to eat dirt and that probably wouldn't taste good. It would be a little gritty due to the dirt. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up cutting the potatoes here and I will show you what my final product looks like. All right, so I have my potatoes and my asparagus mixed in the bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and create my marinade or my oil vinaigrette with a little bit of seasoning so that way they do have some flavor and it's just not just plain asparagus and plain potato. okay so we're using extra virgin olive oil for those of you that don't know me i love olive oil it might be because of my greek roots but i do want to emphasize when you are buying olive oil please aim to buy extra virgin olive oil that is the first press of the olive so in essence it's the purest form of olive oil and it's the one that has the most nutrients to it if you begin to go down the line and you buy olive oil that just says regular olive oil or that says light, that means that it's the second and third press of the olive oil. Um, this extra virgin olive oil is the one that's actually the most beneficial. It's gonna give you the most nutrients. Uh, so you just wanna try to aim to buy that. In this time with COVID-19, if you don't have extra virgin olive oil, please use what olive oil you have at home. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out about a fourth of a cup. So I have my measuring cup here and I'm just gonna go ahead and open the, the bottle. In reality, I don't think we have much more than a fourth of a cup in here. If that, I actually need to go get a new bottle of olive oil. Um, because I love to cook with olive oil so much, I always keep an extra bottle on hand so that way I don't run out. Um, so we're just finishing this up right here. Olive oil, so extra virgin olive oil is going to be darker in color um, and it's always it always comes in a dark bottle and that just helps keep it fresh and keep it good. In order to store olive oil, you just want to keep it in a cool dark place. So what, if you have a basement, some people store it in there um, or like in a dark cupboard is great too. You just don't want to leave it out where it's exposed to the sun all day. So I'm gonna pause this while I go ahead and grab another bottle because we have not reached a fourth of a cup. My second bottle of olive oil and I'm gonna go ahead and continue pouring until I reach a fourth of a cup. If your measuring cup does not have a fourth cup marker, just kind of, you're gonna have to eyeball it. Um, so you just kind of look to see where the half line, half cup mark is and just go 
about halfway between that and the bottom to get a fourth cup. All right, so we're done with the olive oil. And then I'm gonna go ahead, traditionally I'd like to use the juice of a lemon, but I don't have a lemon on me, I have lime. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some limes and squeeze that in here just so that way you have the nice mix of um, a little bit of acidity in here. Limes are a really inexpensive form of citrus that you can add to just about any meal that you're cooking with. If the meal does call for lemon juice or lime juice, I always like to use fresh lemons or limes where I actually cut the citrus in half and squeeze it into the dressing or vinaigrette. Um, if you don't have that, if you're someone that likes to use the lime juice out of the bottle, that's okay. I just always recommend using a fresh option when possible because that way you know it's strictly lime juice or lemon juice and nothing else has been added into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and in order to get some of the juices flowing, you just kind of like to rub it in between your hands or on the counter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I will cut it in half. And then if you have a citrus press, you could actually squeeze it over that or you can just choose to squeeze it over your measuring cup like this or maybe use a fork to help you get some of the juices out. If you have some of the pulp fallout too, that's not a big deal. It'll just add some extra flavor. All right, so I'm gonna add the juice of half a lime in here. Um, one thing that I do actually really like about limes is they tend to, not always, sometimes you end up with one that has a seed, but they tend to not have seeds. Lemons always seem to have seeds and um, it's sometimes a pain trying to make sure that the seed does not fall into your your vinaigrette or whatever you're making. If you have the, the juicer, then it's fine because it tends to catch the seeds in its little dish. If you don't, you can just squeeze it over your hand and use one hand as a strainer so the juice will fall through and then you'll catch the seeds in your hand. So I've gone ahead, the oven is done preheating. I've gone ahead and I have basically squeezed out all the juice from the slime. And so I'll use my fork to kind of mix slash whisk everything together. So the lime, the rest of the lime will store well in the fridge and you can use it for other meals. I'll use it when I cook later on. Or if you like to add a little bit of zest into your um, tea, you can squeeze some citrus juice in there and it adds a little bit of flavor in there too. So that's an option to use, but it does refrigerate well. Um, I would use it within three days after having cut it in half. So we're next gonna go ahead and add our seasonings. I'm gonna use oregano leaves, thyme, and then basil. If you don't have these in your house and you have say only oregano, that's fine too. It's just, I'm using what I have, um, but we obviously want you to remain safe. And so you can also swap these out for other um, ingredients or other spices. You can go ahead and make it a little bit Cajun mix and so add some paprika and chili powder and cumin. It's really up to you and what you desire. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have my fourth teaspoon and I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop out. You don't want a heaping teaspoon. You want it to be pretty, pretty flat, pretty standard. I'm just gonna dump it in to my measuring cup that I have over here. Um, if you don't like to measure, I would suggest only doing like two to three shakes of each, depending on how big the holes in the top of the grate are. But when possible, it's okay to actually measure your seasoning. Seasonings can be great, but too much of a good thing. Um, and so you don't want it to become overbearing or like too powerful with one specific flavor. And then the last seasoning I'm putting in right now is my basil. And I'm just gonna dump that in, okay. So I also have pepper. My pepper came in a peppercorn grinder um, just because I did have peppercorn. So I can't actually unscrew the top to measure my pepper just because it isn't ground. If you did have ground pepper, that's great. You can measure a fourth of a teaspoon there. But for me, I'm just gonna eyeball it as I grind. Um, you can kind of see as it's falling out. With the peppercorn grinder, it does come out a little bit slower. Um, so a few more twists and then we're done. All right, and then I'm not someone that likes to cook with 
salt a whole lot just because I feel like I get a lot of sodium in other aspects of my diet, but I am gonna go ahead and just add, again, that's in a grinder, so I'm just gonna turn the grinder once to get just a little bit for added flavor. All right, so I'm using Mediterranean sea salt. If you have just regular Morton salt, that's fine too. Sea salt just has a little bit more of a stronger flavor. Um, so you, a little bit goes a long way. You don't wanna use a ton of it. So just one, one twist and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up here, get all of the seasonings mixed together. All right, this dressing over my bowl with the potatoes and the asparagus. And I'm then gonna go ahead and make sure it's all out. I'm gonna go ahead and toss it so that way um, it really, everything gets coated pretty well and has a little bit of olive oil on it. You can just use a fork if you wanted to get in here with your hands, you could go ahead and use your hands for it, but um, the fork seems to be working pretty well for me. I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, it looks like it's all pretty well tossed. So you can let this sit for a little bit. Imagine it being a marinade that you're just not letting sit for hours, you're just letting it sit pretty quickly. If you wanted to marinate this for like say an hour before you went ahead and cooked it, that's fine too. Um, it would just allow the flavors to tenderize a little bit um, and the the, fr the produce to tenderize a little bit and it would come back with a very rich, strong flavor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin to process the okay, salmon. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin making our pouch. So I have the salmon. Salmon is a really lean source of protein with around 20 grams of protein in it and little to no fat. When possible, try to buy wild caught fish as opposed to farm raised. I understand that that's not always possible, but if you are given the option, it's best to choose wild caught. So I actually was able to buy this fish and just keep it in my fridge. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. It's This one's vacuum sealed, so it does store a little bit longer and the seal becomes a little bit more difficult to open. All right, and so you'll see I have two, two fish fillets and the back does have the scales. Once this is cooked, do remove the scales. You don't wanna be eating fish scales. It just doesn't taste very good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this on our cookie sheet in the parchment paper. And you're gonna actually do this twice with two separate sets of parchment paper because you don't wanna cook both of them in there at the same time, they're pretty large pieces. This is supposed to serve one person. That's what the serving size on the back of the container said, but I actually like to cut it in half. Um, for me personally, I can't eat this whole piece of fish. So I cut it in half and end up having four meals instead of just two. All right. Since I did just touch fish, I am gonna go ahead and wash my hands. You don't wanna have any cross contamination. This can lead to serious illnesses. Um, like salmonella, if you're cooking with raw meat, E. coli is an option, and you just don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands again. So this is what our salmon looks like on the piece of parchment paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetables to it now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add our asparagus and potatoes to the parchment paper with the salmon. Um, at this point, I did wash my hands, so I'm just gonna grab a few asparagus with the fork and put them on the parchment paper. The nice thing about this is the seasoning from the vegetables will end up coming off onto the fish. Um, if you want, you could also just add a little extra seasoning on top of your fish too, but you don't need to add any more olive oil. The nice thing about salmon is it's very high in omega-3 fatty acids, um, which is good for your heart health. When you are cooking the salmon, you wanna make sure that it's cooked to an internal temperature of 145. This follows the FDA guidelines. Um, if you don't have a meat thermometer, one way to tell if it's done or to kind of begin to figure out if it's done, you'll see that it 
it goes from being like translucent to more opaque and it'll begin to flake more. All right, so, all right, so depending on the size of your fish and the way paper that it's in, but as you can tell, mine's not big enough. So if that's the case, you just grab a second sheet of parchment paper and begin to use that. See the asparagus, it's kind of buried underneath some of the potatoes and our salmon. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and place the second piece of parchment paper over it. And you're gonna begin rolling it around and tucking what the wrap in. The pouch looks like it might not be the prettiest, but it's definitely gonna get the job done. I'm gonna go ahead and stick my fish in for about 30 minutes just because I like my fish a little bit more well done. But you wanna make sure that when you use your meat thermometer, you stick it into the thickest part of the fish fillet to measure it and make sure that that reads an internal temperature of 145 degrees. If you don't have a meat thermometer, you'll notice that the salmon begins to flake off nicely and that it's not translucent anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Thanks, see you in a bit. So it's out of the oven and we can go ahead and open up our packet. And that's what your final product will look like. So your potatoes, your asparagus, and your fish are done. All right, well, thanks for joining. Have a great day, bye.